Best Podcast Ever is sponsored by the Gertzberg Law Firm, a full-service business law firm in Cleveland and Chagrin Falls that's changing the way businesses retain their attorneys. Go to GertzbergLaw.com to learn more. While you're there, check out Cover My Six, a complete legal audit of the six areas that most often create or prevent business lawsuits and government investigations. Go to CoverMySix.com to learn how we keep you safe. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to listen to the best podcast ever recorded. Hey, did you get your wife or your girlfriend or significant other something for Valentine's Day? You know, it's just in two weeks and I would put together baskets and create poetry with their names in it. So it would seem like they planned it and it would just be so intricate that they're like, oh my gosh, I love this gift. Hi, Molly Gebler. Hi, Alex Gertzberg. How's it going? Well, how goes it with you, man? You know what? I'm living the dream. You are living the dream. I'm living the dream. Absolutely. It's how- nice and folly out there. Ohio State won. Did you watch that Browns game? Browns sucked it again. Jeez, oh, man. You know, Tiffany and I were downtown, and when we left, it was uh, 17. No. We were winning by a, a okay. touchdown, at least, I think. Oh, we were winning well- by 10. Yeah, we went to overtime. Yeah, Yeah. it's just a. It was terrible. mm, What mm, happened? mm. I don't know. It's disappointing. I don't know, but I enjoyed some fantastic fried artichokes for lunch because, from yours truly, because I made a bet with Sarah over there at yours truly. Um, She came in the other day with her Penn State necklace on. And of course, we went into the banter back and forth because Ohio State was playing Penn State this weekend. And. I said, I'll bet you a order of fried artichoke hearts, which are phenomenal. And mm. Ohio State won. So I got to enjoy some amazing, yours truly uh, treat today. So I she definitely. Came crawling into the office. I definitely thought that if you are eating fried artichokes, that means you lost a bet. But you're saying. Oh, no, they're so good. I've never and had yours them. truly. Oh, they're fried so, artichokes. so good. So delicious. We'll check that out. It's good to to allow my Facebook followers to know that I enjoy something other than M Italian's lobster salad, which is still on the menu, folks, until the end of October. FYI. Good to know. Yes, that is yes. really good. Have lobster you tried salad. It? Oh yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, it's, it's really delish. good. So good. Yeah. But yours truly, artichokes are just as good, and I got to enjoy them for free, which probably makes it even better. Um, yeah, that does make it better. But she came in and she was sad. It was a good game. It could have been anyone's win, but thank God it was my team. Yeah. Um, what did you do this week? Anything good? We had such an action-packed weekend, Molly Gebler. Yeah. It was, I bet you, we did like 30 different things in, in a span Stop. of two days. And on Monday or on Saturday, we didn't even start our day until like two in the afternoon. It was so action-packed. On Saturday, we spent... Um, the afternoon in the Coventry area, okay. and I showed Tiffany my old stomping grounds, you know, where I used to live d- during law school and uh, and before that. And we had Thai food, and we went into the paperback bookstore, and we bought books, and then we went to a coffee shop, and we read books at the coffee shop, and that oh was fun. Gosh. It was good. No, it was fun. We walked around a lot. And then yesterday, we went um, boating. You didn't get your invitation? I sent it to you. Oh, man. I paid for a boating trip. Still haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> I have. Stop it. Because I've said to I'm you. I'm not going to stop it. That's your fault. That's your fault. You're supposed to just. All you got to do is tell me when you want to go. You would. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we went to. Oh, we went to this bar. I think it's a new one. I think they just opened up. It's called Southern Tier Brewing Company. Okay. You ever heard? It's really good. They had this pumpkin cider or beer or whatever delicious real it's a really cool bar too so we watched a bunch of the browns game there and then we went to the chagrin falls farmers market yesterday that was lovely drove my parents to the airport this can't possibly be fun for our listeners to listen to me well i mean it makes us realize how absolutely how much of a good son i am for i know how much we do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition, Molly. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So that that was the weekend. It was a lo- it was lovely weather yesterday too. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I was listening to uh, our. I was listening to the last episode with um, who was on it? The last episode. Oh, 
Jessica. With, with Jessica. And I've heard that. I have not listened. I heard it's the funny one yet. Funniest well, one Well, I mean, just... I had to re-listen to the ball gag discussion several times and got several texts from friends Paul. about it. Yeah, Paul loved Paul really um, keying in on that one. <laughs> no, he was on injection. Oh, um, that's right. By injection. By injection. Yeah. That was silly. He sent me an email. Uh, this is Paul, Paul Marnicek, one of our former, yes. uh, if you want to listen to a great Councilman. episode, um, listen to Paul Marnicek's episode. But he, I think the the... The subject line of the email was just by injection. Yeah. 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 Um, we That was a really, uh, that was a, a dirty podcast. Was it? Yeah, we well, talked dirty. Is that like late night? I don't know. Late night podcast. Well, I, the vodka didn't help anything. The flow vodka. Wow. That, you know? flow, hot, flow vodka helps everything. <laughs> so the they ca- say. The cause and solution to all of life's problems. That's right. Keep it flowing. <laughs> Keep um, it flowing. That was a good episode, folks. You should go back and listen to it. Uh, what else, Molly? Um, what did you do all weekend besides here. watch uh, Ohio State and Browns? Yeah, um, I finished Allie McBeal. Really? Oh, yeah. before I forget, before yeah. you keep going, um, Wild Wild Country on Netflix. Yes or no? I have not watched. You should watch it. it. It's, that's the cult one. Yeah, right? it's crazy. Okay, I've I've heard. And is it true? Is it a true? Yes, but that's okay. the thing about it. So Tiffany and I have watched four of the six episodes, and I was one million percent certain that they're making all of it up. That there's no way this stuff actually happened. And I wouldn't stop googling it until I found something that said it was a hoax. And everything I saw from legitimate news sources said, yes, this actually happened. And hmm. it is bananas. Interesting. You, got, you should watch it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I'm, yeah. I'm up for something. It's crazy that that, that that actually happened. I will tell you. I mean, you won't believe huh. it. Huh. Watch it. Allie McBeal. Uh, yeah. Speaking yeah. Speaking of realistic. Uh, yes, very much so. <laughs> um, I was a little just, dis- I felt it had jumped the shark this, this whole last once my boyfriend um, Robert Downey Jr. left, mm. it anytime in a show they start traveling to somewhere else. Interesting. You know, they t- the Brady Bunch took the trip, and that to was Hawaii. The, yeah, <laughs> um, Brady or um, Happy Days. Well, that was the original Shark Jumper. Correct. <laughs> when, correct. When Fonzie jumped the show. So yeah, so it was a little. Um, like really that's that's how you're going to end this that's how you're going to end hmm. that so I was a little disappointed but I did dabble into that good doctor yeah about the autistic doctor the doctor that has autism okay um do you like that it was good you know did you see what I did there when I explained him you used good grammar well no see you're not allowed to the disease does not does not describe the person. So I said autistic oh, doctor, I and like it's that. a doctor with autism. Oh. The disease doesn't. So it's not an autistic boy. It's is a, that it's something a child that, that has autism? Is that something that um, autism advocates ask you to I do? I think so. I mean, yeah. my daughter who did she did the autism walk right. this past weekend. Um, yeah, she uh, oh, that's always corrects me, and, so, and, it, and it makes sense. You know, I don't. Sure. I don't want to be the fat girl. I want to be the girl who's fat, <laughs> <laughs> or chunky. Oh. I'd rather be called chunky. <laughs> I think. I think Big it's boned. better. I, I think it's better to be the fat girl than the girl who's fat, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! Um, Lots of notes about our podcasting from our director. I'm just trying to go through them all. I probably should have read them prior to uh, our taping here because there's um, <laughs> there's lots of little notes that I think we should be. Uh, when did that come out? October 2018. That's now. Yeah. Right, I mean, I this is like attention. the whole. Um, All right, hold on a second. I think she actually has my. We're supposed to oh, say this verbatim. Well, 
Let's see. Here's our lightning round questions. Oh, that's great, Nellie. Nice job. Great job. I guess it would have been helpful if we read it prior to. Well, this came out at 2.11 p.m. I haven't even thought about email since this morning. I know. I know. Um, It's been a busy day. I kind of think that... um, well, never mind. Oh, I, should, I should not think. Even what were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say, Something I kind of... Negative. There's an aspect to breaking all of these rules um, purely to torture <laughs> Nelly <laughs> that I think is somewhat entertaining. Oh, my gosh. Um, did you, when you were a kid, did you read Judy Bloom books? Oh, for sure. Did you know that I saw her last week? With I, Brent... I told you to go see her. Did you? Was that yes, you? Yes, yes. Uh, on a podcast. You might be right. One of the libraries, I, right? It was like a library. Yeah. 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 I, I went with yes. our good friend Brenda Kane. Oh. Yeah. How fun. We now have we've got we have a monthly date now because that series, the the Cuyahoga County Public Library has a series, yes. as you know. Yeah. And John Grisham is gonna be there. And um but Judy Bloom was fantastic. Fantastic. And um we learned a lot about her craft and about her method for writing those books and it's it's fascinating because i read them even as a boy you know mostly girls read them yeah um i just remember hiding forever in my drawer because we weren't allowed to read that one Oh, that was the name of the book, Hiding Forever? Forever. No, Oh, Forever. forever. That's right. right. She talked a lot about I that. I would that hide con- it in my drawer. It's controversial. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Why was it? Did she say? Well, because was, there was sex in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And- I think that there was a- there, well, yeah. she, she said, um, I don't want to ruin the end of it if you haven't read it, but she wrote that book for her daughter- because in the 70s and 80s, most books that had sex in them, at least that she read and that were available to her daughter, were very anti-sex. And um, apparently her daughter, who was reading all these other books about sex and, and why you shouldn't have it, um, said to her one day, Mom, can someone just write a book that is for teenagers that has sex in it that doesn't end in the girl getting pregnant and getting sent away to her aunt's house to live until the baby comes out and then she comes back and she's ostracized by her whole community and the and Judy Bloom said yeah I, and I'm gonna write it and that's that's what happened wow. with that book huh yeah so, um, I was gonna say I have to reread it but well come it was on, folks it was it, it was really <laughs> funny so I remember reading um, are you there God it's me Margaret. Do you remember that book? Oh, yes. Right? I say that often. Often. Are you there, God? It's my like, Molly? No. I'll, like, if, if I'm lost a call or I, my sister I can't hear anymore, I'm like, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. <laughs> really? All the time. All I can the see time. you saying yeah. that. So, we, so, first of all, it was a packed house. Oh, and the guy that interviewed her, so it's, a, it's two people on stage. It's the author who wrote the lemony snicket the lemony snicket series okay right um so he's interviewing her he's interviewing her okay and they're both she's had 80 million uh um printings of her book or or she's sold 80 million copies i should say he has sold 60 million copies wow and he's in i mean it was like it was crazy there are these two giants yeah um but anyway, so and it was a packed house. There were there were hundreds of people, it, and it was in um, Case Western's campus at the um, man. It's like this giant old synagogue that is now. I don't know if it's still a, a working synagogue. I forget what it's called. Um, but anyway, it was a really cool venue, and it was packed. But so um, she talked a lot about how the. <laughs> The um, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret book has been so widely discussed because of its f- description of g- girls getting their periods. Right. right? Oh, yes. Oh, and, yes. And she said, she talked about how, <laughs> I mean, we spent, I bet you she spent like, of the, t- of the two hours there, a half hour just talking about that part of that book. And she talked about how... Um, this is going to, I don't, I'm probably go- going into territory I shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. So, 
Because you know a lot about periods. Right. In the, uh, in the original publication of that book, which was in the early 80s, I want to say, or sometime in the 80s, um, the, um, the feminine hygiene product technology was not as it is today. Okay. There, were, there were far more limited ways to address uh, menstruation then <laughs> than there are today. <laughs> and she talked about how um, her publisher kept hounding her to update are you there god it's me margaret oh, to talk about tampons and to talk about something other than what was around back then and i guess right. what was around back then the original the original printing of that book i guess what women used in the 70s and 80s Gosh, it had a name. Do you remember what it was? What the a name of the pad? But, but it, it, it sounded like that's what she was describing. But there was another name for it. Oh yeah, belts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a belt. She. she oh, you it was, used it to was, have it was, to. Yes. It was called a something belt. I remember. You wore the belts, and the maxi pad slid into like a little sleeve. Yes, that's what she was. It's because the sticker wasn't there yet. But. It was something, was it a Santa belt? Is that what it was called? I don't know. But anyway, it was something belt. <laughs> wow. Silly. Uh, anywho, it was a very entertaining talk and uh, it inspired me to write, which is a good segue into our um, guest today. Maxi Pats? Yes. <laughs> Let's make sure we ask her a lot of questions about that. Oh my gosh. She is Erica Parker. Uh, and you know Erica through the chamber, yes? I do, yes, yes. Um, Good. I met Erica, uh, we had coffee at, um, oh, I met her at a WIN event, Women in Networking event, where I spoke. And then we had coffee after. And then uh, she became a chamber member. Mm -hmm. And now she's on the podcast. She's a ghostwriter. And a uh, an editor, uh, she helps people write fiction, nonfiction, self help books, e manuals, memoirs, company websites, press releases, emails, newsletters, and much, much more. Um, and uh, she has a company called Lyrical Innovations LLC, where she is the owner, lead editor, ghostwriter, and writing coach. Uh, she's written. Uh, various things, including pen point your perspective, um, reflections of a rising soul, and she is a teacher at Streets Boroughs Parks and Rec Department, uh, where she teaches students uh, of all ages to write better. Um, so, and she volunteers in lots of different places, and I can't wait to chat with her. I know. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. Let's go get our okay, guest, shall we? Yes. Yeah. Erica, go get her. Yeah. Well, that, oh, you, I'm going to go know get her. her. Okay. Yeah. She's I your guest. This is for something happens. <laughs> I don't know if it's magic or... <laughs> How are you, Erica Parker? I am good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Absolutely. We appreciate it. I mean, I wanted you to, to, to come and hang out with us, and Molly was like, no, she's going to be boring. And I said, no, she's going to be awesome. Come on. Don't well, I'm listen. glad you won that debate. Thank yeah. you. That's Don't not at all how it, that's not how it Don't listen to him. Um, <laughs> that's not how it happened at all. I mean... <laughs> Alex gonna... didn't even meet you until I introduced I you. I saw... We've got a crack research department. Oh, And, and okay. she dug up all this great stuff about you and i said we've got to have erica parker yeah that's how it here went. nice yeah. yeah i love yeah. it well welcome to the gertzberg law firm offices aka monday nights is podcast office correct yes, yes. That's i true. love it we're yeah. excited to have you and talk oh, and first of all just oh. to be clear with all the um guests yes she's not really a ghost uh, well, I think well, we, we should leave that. I'm not sure. <laughs> we need to be when clear some, on that. I feel like um, one of the great things about being a ghost writer is you can leave that open. You could say, you know, I mean, if you think about it, right, the the, the concept of ghost writing. Well, let's dive into that yeah. because why would somebody <laughs> not want, like, so somebody just can't write? 
Not all the time. Like sometimes people somebody... sometimes people have been there and done that. Sometimes they've written a couple of books and they just say, Okay, I've done that and now I'm I just want to work with someone else to do that for me. Sometimes okay. they lack the ability to do it or the time. Okay. So or they don't want to do the research. Yeah. So it, it could be a myriad of things. Uh, mm. what what is your typical ghostwriting assignment look like? What walk us through the process? Um it ranges because I have a business background. Mm -hmm. I have a creative writing background. Um, so I can get someone that wants to maybe put out a book because they're a subject matter expert and they want to put it out on a particular subject. And so I, you know, work with them and we do research together and we talk about what's trending in their industry and we put it out according to that. Or I could have, I had recently a lady who told me she wanted to do a memoir for her children when she's gone. Um, so we started doing some research on just her life and um, kind of like a history thing where we walked through her whole life. And that was really fun. I learned a lot, actually, with that one. I would have to say that would be a good niche because of Alzheimer's becoming such a huge thing yes. um, to reach out to people now to get their their story down for their family moving forward if, if they see that Alzheimer's is in the in the future to get their life down. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just as a memoir for your for yeah. a family to know what, absolutely. what the history was. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. I mean, I think it's, isn't it to just um, being able to record your family's history and legacy for the next generations? Right. right. Did it, I not say it that way? What I'm saying whether you've got <laughs> Alzheimer's or not, though, right? Because other, otherwise, it's it's just oral, it's just oral history, and it's not really, and it changes the more times it's retold. Sure. Right. right. True. Yeah. Um, okay. Your way. It's not to better. diminish from your business plan of targeting Alzheimer's patients. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I'm saying with that being so huge these days. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, I. I hear you. Or even if you're, you know, for me, I want to sit down with my grandmother. You know, she's 93 years old. You know, there's a lot of history there. So you want to, you know, meet with them. And I, I think that's kind of where it started for me because I was starting to write her story. And it was so amazing, the things that she had seen. And mm. oh, my goodness. Um, and I just said, I want to help more people do that. She was so grateful. She was like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. And so I said, I want to help more people do that. So that's how it kind of started. And it kind of went from there. But, I mean, the topics that people want to write books about What's can be very one? interesting. Crazy. One of one. them was he thought he was like this physicist or something. He wanted to, to talk about the planets and how the Big Bang Theory, but he had a twist on it somehow, how it just it really didn't happen like that. And he had all these, you know, facts to back it up. And it was just like, OK, I don't know if there's really a market for this. Sorry. And I told him, I said, I don't know how many books you're going to be able to sell for this or, or, you know. And so he said, well, it's my passion. And, and that's so, a good you know, point. So I do advise them. Uh, if yeah, I right. think that there's not a market for it, I do. Because I don't want them to invest, you know, the time and money into putting the book out and then they can't sell it. What if it's something you're totally against? Would you still write it? No. No. Has that ever happened? Yes. Really? Can you give an example? There have been some things where some sketchy, like dark, uh, how do I word this, um, ways of life huh. that I didn't agree with, let's just say. Erica, um, how, how long have you been doing this? I've been doing this for about four years now. Okay. Yeah. And you've got a company. That yes. You work... My company's eight years old. I've been okay. ghostwriting for four. Got and it. I've had my company editing for eight years. And do you um, also advise, so once the book has been written, do you also advise the client on how to get it published? Yes, I do. I walk them through the, okay. the self-publishing process okay. and if they want to do traditional publishing totally different things so i help them with query letters yeah. and with they're very specific when they're receiving the books you can get ruled out for any reason for the font size for how yeah. it's you know packaged so the paperweight needs to be a certain weight like all of that when should crazy. when should someone um is there a is there an inflection point where someone should say i i should only 
consider self-publishing or I should definitely focus on the publishing houses and have somebody else publish it? Is there... If you don't do well with rejection, you should probably self-publish. Okay. <laughs> You're going to go through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I mean, just think of the greats, the best sellers. Yeah. They were all rejected, right. you know, at some point in time. Because you, you're you're so emotionally invested mm-hmm. in your story. You're like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, you know. Right. And then you submit it and they're like, no, we're yeah. not going. And they don't give you a reason. Like, they're yeah. so swamped. They don't barely have right. enough time to mail it back to you. Right. Um, they, you know, you have to send a self-addressed stamped envelope and right. yeah, which, right. you know, all of that because they're just swamped. So it goes through the assistant first and then it goes, if the assistant likes it, then they yeah. give it to the editor and then the editor reads it. And if they like yeah. it, you know, then it's time to get a, a literary agent so you can get your best deal with your contract. Yeah, you got to have a thick skin for sure. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And the um, when someone wants to hire you to ghostwrite mm-hmm. a story for them, um, do you have a length for the story in mind and a timeline in mind? Let's say I'm your. I call you mm-hmm. tomorrow and I and I say I've got a story I want. Um, if I, if in my mind I want like a, a 300 page story, is that something we talk about or? Yes, we can talk about that. So it's, it's more like a partnership. It's okay. not, you know, Hey, write me this book. It's more so like I, you give me your concept. We go through and we make the outline together. We partner on that. And then you say, Hey, I want, you know, this to be the longest section or to focus on this. And then we just work together and I submit the, the content to the writer. Well, I'm the writer, the author. Um, and the author reviews it, they, you know, yay or nay it. And then I go back to the drawing board or I continue on. Um, and then they know the whole time what the book is going to read. Okay. How are you doing it like by chapter? And you normally by, it? I normally do it by section. Okay. Um, you know, depending on, because sometimes if it's nonfiction, there are no chapters, it's just topics. So we do topics, subtopics. Um, so I normally, I, I don't want to get too far because if you don't like, you know, the, right. the direction I'm going in, I don't want to have to start from right. scratch. So I do try to do checkpoints and temperature checks and they're like, oh, I love this. Can you elaborate on this or scale back on this? Mm-hmm. Or, um, so. And I think I told you that Alex journals and you said then he yes. has a book right there yes, in his journal yeah well so um i do journal a lot i just started a whole new writing project that i want to talk to you about nice actually I want to be, uh, let's talk about it do you let's mind no, i just have a little ahead. consultation here sure. with erica all right erica Absolutely. check this out so here's the concept tell me if, if this is if this is crazy okay um are you allowed to say the concept what if someone um, takes well, it no i'm i'm, I'm not going to get into details okay okay the, co- the concept is that I believe that I have something that people will find very useful, okay? Okay. Um, in their business in particular. Okay. And I love writing about it. And in fact, I realized the other day that I enjoy writing about it so much that I actually don't care if anyone reads it. Wow. Right? I just, I, it, I, 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 I get right a lot there. of joy out of it. Yeah. And I've, I've, <laughs> I have, I, I have, um, Molly and I talk about this all the time. I've started many books. Mm-hmm. It's the whole finishing them. You would be True perfect. True writer. True writer. For, you would be perfect for some of the, the, the things that I've started. Um, I should call you and have you finish all of those things for me. <laughs> but anyway, the question for you is, mm-hmm. um, is it worthwhile to start putting chunks of this book out as a blog for free Mm -hmm. and getting it out there on a regular basis Mm -hmm. so that at the end of the process what i do is i compile all those blogs edit them a little bit Mm -hmm. add some new stuff to it bring in some um guest writers and then make a book out of it oh my goodness you just described like i don't know how many books that are on the market right now yeah. Yes. I was thinking that too. You build your following that way. Yes. Um, in my book, I talk about that. How you need to really just get that, yeah. that that content out there so people can know. So on LinkedIn, I have people I follow, and the only reason I follow them is because they put out good content. Right. And you know what? Whatever I guess profession I was doing at the time, if I was a recruiter or whatever I was doing, if it was related to my craft, I would follow them and I would yeah. read the blogs and and read the you know the articles and then. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm I'm totally in with this person. They've proven themselves to yeah. me, like they're an expert. And I don't know if they're an expert or not. I mean, how's there yeah. a way to really know? But 
but you decide. You decide. You yeah. put the content out there. You control what if someone Googles you. You control it by putting the content out there yourself. Right. Because when you do that. Now you're giving them something to Google. Yeah. You're having more control over that. So if you put that out there and you get your following and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, I'm living for the content that he right. puts out there. That's how you build that following. And then before you know it, you put that together. Like you said, maybe interview a couple folks. Right. Um, add, you know, some more content to it and then put it together. And yeah. And my other reasoning behind it is that, um, you know, some people respond um, well to external pressures more so than internal pressures, Definitely. right? And having that kind of, um, what's that word? It starts with an A accountability, right? Account having that accountability helps me sometimes knowing that there's a court deadline, right? My brief right. is getting done. Right. You know what I mean? Do people right. but, blog anymore though? Oh yes. Well, those, Big time. Those of us really? that read oh, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> I see, I see. And where would where would somebody be reading blogs? So you'll have, say, for example, you wanted to put something on LinkedIn. I don't know if you're a big yeah, LinkedIn person. For sure. And so, you know, you're scrolling through your news feed on LinkedIn and you see all these articles, right? Ten ways to do this or five ways to do that. When you click on that article and you read it on LinkedIn, normally there's some hyperlinks in there. And right. so, or it might be like a small bio at the end. That's where you, that's how you get to the blog. And now it's their website. Now you're leaving LinkedIn and going to their website. Now you're engaging with them, signing up for their newsletter or their, right. you know, to get it sent to your, your inbox. And that's how you engage yeah. with your audience. You, you probably read blogs and don't realize it. Yes. Because a lot of them turn into like entire publications. Like you don't read Huffington Post, but that used to be a blog. Mm -hmm. BuzzFeed and yes. like, where do you, what do you read when you're other than social media? What do you read? Just social media, huh? But if you're reading I don't social even media, read the social media, I if mean, you're like I'm not a media scroller post, through. That's probably a blog. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a poster more than I am a, okay. I won't spend time scrolling through social My kind media. Of girl. I, love it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So what, are you talking about like news and stuff? Well, I'm probably out of it because I don't want to know about it. I'm ignorant when it comes to news. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. Um, I find I used to be a blog junkie and I, I would read seven to ten of them a day. D like oh, wow. different different blogs for a while. But now He's I a find, reader. But now I find that I'm listening to podcasts yes. and watching video vlogs right more than i'm reading blogs okay you know mm -hmm. and what little i actually read because now i really read a lot more books because I, I i noticed that the more i was reading online the less books i was reading mm -hmm. so I, I try to shift my reading to books and and newsworthy things would be mostly listened to or watched right 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 so do you think that that's common you're yes. you, it sounds like that's you know a, a lot about thing. blogs that's a that's a right? millennial thing um the vlogs and um podcasts and things like right. that i think it's kind of shaped by millennials um on your way to work on yeah. your lunch hour while you're washing the dishes or whatever you're yeah. doing um you know what the best podcast is the best podcast best, ever it's of course <laughs> i'm on it <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Although you're starting a podcast. Yes, Pinpoint Your Perspective podcast. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, we can tell you what not to do. Please. And when, probably about that. not. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. Nellie can tell. We'll tell you. Yeah, that's true. We're still doing what you're not supposed to do. Um, a whole list of things I we're know. not supposed to be doing. I know. Yeah. I knew not to drink too much water so I wouldn't have wet mouth because that's a yucky sound. Or oh, to... we're the opposite. <laughs> we're, 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 yeah. we're getting in trouble for dry mouth. No, no, <laughs> Nelly, uh, our, our producer... We're supposed to have water. <laughs> our producer said make sure you go to the bathroom beforehand, so that's why we <laughs> oh, drink less hilarious. water. In red. Oh, hilarious. Uh, Erica, do you think it's true that blogs are being read less by everyone or just by me? <sighs> I have a client that I'm working with right now. She just started a blog. She has a Facebook page. She has like 7,000 followers on her mm -hmm. Facebook page, and she's always posting. She said that she wanted to start a blog. So we started this blog, and she said, I am struggling. I can't get people to go to my blog. You know, they like my posts on Facebook. They won't go to my blog. So she did a Facebook Live video. She did all these things, and we're, we're trying all these concepts. So 
it might be true. It might be true that people aren't really. I know that when I have friends that share that they've started a blog, you know, they get a couple of likes. And I'm like, is it that it's a dying breed? I don't know. I have no idea. I know that people that the output that I put out there, people read, but people that are get, just getting started, sometimes it, it can be a little rough because they're like, oh, no, not another blog, you know? So you have your, your lifestyle blogs that you read and listen to, and then you just... I guess you kind of get fascinated with those and you're like, I'm good. No new blogs, like hashtag yeah. no new blogs. And the blogs that I do still read are ones that have, um, that are very short and to the point. Yes. With pictures. You know, pictures sometimes help. To break like there's it up. this one, um, do you know who Seth Godin is? At yes. All? Like when it, he infrequently, uh, um, will, will put something out. I think if I'm thinking of the right one and it's always like a paragraph, it's always words that are so carefully chosen and precise that it doesn't have to go on for pages and pages. And that's why I think people don't want to invest the time. They'd rather read a post on Facebook than right. they would invest the time in a, in a blog. Uh, what does Erica Parker read online? Wow, what does Erica Parker read online? Erica Parker does not have time to read online because Erica's busy writing people's books. <laughs> um, but when I do get time, I actually am a fiction reader, like big time. Um, so I like to read a lot of fiction because I like to escape. I don't mm. want to read anything heavy. Mm. I have enough stress in my life, so I do like to kind of get away with fiction. What are the stresses um, of Erica Parker? Oh, two small children. Oh, yeah, oh do MG. It. Uh, three <laughs> and a six-year-old. Um, so they're, they're, they're a lot. They're a handful. Oh, big time. Yeah, I think that's a, probably the biggest source of, but it's like good stress. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you love them. You know, what are you going to do? Well, do you have an so. office? I mean, how I would assume that you need complete quiet and concentration when you're writing a book. So or... the three-year-old is in preschool and the okay. six-year-old is in first grade. Okay. So my office is Panera Bread, your local Panera Bread. You nice. can catch me in pretty much any location nice. at any given time. Um, I do need to get out of the house. There's a lot of distractions there. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll put on a load of laundry. I'll wash some dishes. Then I look up and, you know, I haven't gotten anything done. So Panera, mm -hmm. you know, or the local, you know, coffee shops. I love those. That's where I do my best work as well oh yeah, yeah with some earbuds yeah. oh yeah. yeah oh yeah big time and how many books do you have going on at once and have you ever merged them by accident oh my goodness. Re reading oh or my writing goodness. writing yeah. right now i have i'm working on four okay so could one be about a princess that lives in <laughs> jamaica that <laughs> is a plumber i mean do you ever merge them together where you're like oh, oh crap that's not that's not this book. That's... Thank goodness they're always different genres. Okay. I do not do that to myself. Okay. Like one of them is a motivational memoir. Another one is a, um, it's like a business, kind of like a LinkedIn for books. It's weird. It's like he talks about his experiences and how he came in from nothing to where he is now. He's very successful. Another one is a fiction which I'm, I think that's what I'm enjoying the most right now, just because it's, we're just having so much fun. Like every time I send her a note, she's like, oh my gosh, I love that. And it's, we just kind of have this high that we have when we speak with each other. So that's Aww. awesome. And then the um, fourth one is mine. So, okay. well, if you so ever, lips are sealed on that one. Okay. <laughs> if you ever are, like you mentioned this gentleman that is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, if you're ever working with someone and you feel that they're, um, worthy enough to be on the best podcast ever oh, to promote nice. their book or anything, yes. send him our way. Please do so. Oh my goodness. That would be amazing. And did yeah. a Bob Hunt reach out to you yet? Bob? Yes. Bob reached out. Okay, good. Yes. I gave him yes. your contact. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Put Absolutely. the pressure on Bob to write me back though. Okay. Oh, okay. So he <laughs> reached out to you. You reached out to him and it's on Bob now. Well, that's okay. Cause well, you know, sometimes on, things get lost the in the sauce. It's on the podcast now. Yes. So it's right. gonna. Bob. Are you listening, um, Bob? <laughs> Bob? <laughs> we'll, we'll tag him yeah. in this. Um, so, and and what what books are Erica? What books is? What book are you reading now to escape from the stress <laughs> of your everyday life and your work? My book that I'm reading right this minute is called Oh, it's by Carl Weber, and it's about a guy who escapes from prison. But he escapes because his son is in danger. 
And so he's trying to figure out what's going on with his son. It has something to do with his ex-girlfriend. She's threatening his son in some way. Mm. So he's on the run and his friends are like getting harassed by the FBI. They're trying to track this guy down and he's just trying to get to his son. So it's pretty good. That sounds like a movie Molly's going to watch one one day soon. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, can I get that on a movie? I did see Smallfoot. Did you? Mm -hmm. Uh, Is that a kid's movie? What is? Oh, I saw it with little Maria. Okay. That's the one LeBron's in and Common and um, oh. I forget who else is in it. Um, I don't know. It was cute. It was it was deep. It was you know how sometimes cartoons they try to attract the parent more than the the I child. Mm-hmm. I think it was a little of that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Erica, you have been doing the ghostwriting thing for four years, but your company's been around for eight years, you said. So what were the first four years all about? Oh, the first four years were... Oh, wow. So I this is how I got started. First of all, Lyrical Innovations does not sound like a ghostwriting and editing company, does it? No. Nope. So it got started because I was writing personalized poetry for husbands who forgot their women, their uh, <gasps> women's, no, sorry. Brilliant. Um, their wife's, <laughs> their anniversary with their wife or their wife's birthday I or love Valentine's it. Day. What a great it business It started in model. my church and I would go up to guys and say, hey, did you get your wife or your girlfriend or significant other something for Valentine's Day? You know, it's just in two weeks and I would put together baskets and create poetry with their names in it. So it would seem like they planned it and it would just be so intricate that they're like, oh my gosh, I love this gift. So then it branched into, (laughs) I was reading a book and it was so full of errors that I reached out to a self-publishing company and I said, I want to, I want to stop errors in self-published books. And she said, do you have editing experience? I said, I don't. And she said, okay, well, send me a sample. And I sent her a sample. And she's like, you're using proofreading marks. Where did you learn that? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, I, I'm going to hire you. So I became a freelance editor for about a year. And then I started Lyrical Innovation. So it kind of went from there. And then people were like, oh, can you write my foreword? Can you write my back cover content? Can you fill in, you know, some, I need some more character depth in the story. And then it just turned into writing coach. And then writing coach turned into ghostwriter. So here I am. Tell you, um, I really like that business model of helping um, forgetful spouses. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alex would their... like to talk to you after the. Oh, I'm going to sign a three-year contract with you. <laughs> um, that's brilliant. It, it, um, is it? Do you still do that? that that's oh what was... yeah, big time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do, and I also do uh, graduation uh, frames for people when their uh, their kids graduate high school or middle school or college. I do frames with like a picture and post personalized poetry. Hmm. And, yeah, oh. I do. That's like one of my favorite projects. I love doing that. Gentlemen that are listening right now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> go to where should they go, Erica? Let's not Lyrical lose them. LyricalInnovationsLLC.com. There you go, folks. Lyrical Innovations LLC. <laughs> Best <laughs> husband, <laughs> boyfriend ever. Um, we were uh, watching that movie Her the other day. Did you see that movie Her? I did not. H E R with Joaquin Phoenix. It's really good. And and um, he's in love with the phone person, S- Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, oh my right. He's yes. in love with no. He's in no. He's in love with an AI robot. Like oh. a like Alexa, a, or yeah, Alexa. exactly. Yes, but his job in that movie is that it's writing personalized greeting cards oh. for people, um, and and ghostwriting like love letters to people, and sends them as if he's yeah. that person. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Wow. It's pretty funny. Oh, oh that's boy. awesome. Um, that's so pretty funny. The um, is that a big is is that a busy part of your business? The which part? The um, helping forgetful spouses part. <laughs> it's it's about two percent now, but okay. it was it's how I got started. I'm telling you, it yeah. would, I would just I'm like okay, let's just wait exactly before two weeks. Like I'm not gonna approach them before because then they're gonna yeah. be able to have time to go out and pick something. So I I would reach out and say, hey, you know it's coming up in two weeks, and then they're like, oh my gosh, and I'm like, yeah, and yeah. you can't just run to the store. You got to get them something nice. So put the pressure on. Them. So and, and all right. So let's compartmentalize the various services that Lyrical Innovations <laughs> is comprised of, right? So there's the forgetful spouse segment. There's the ghost writing segment. Correct. Uh, what are writing the others? Coach. Writing coach. So I can take someone from idea conception to finishing the book through a series. You can do six sessions. You can do twelve. You can do eighteen sessions. Um, 
just depending on what your time okay. allows. And then we meet together. You get me for an hour and we hash it out. Writing coach, ghost writing, forgetful spouse. What Edit, else? Um, editor as well. Editing. <laughs> All right. Yes. Anything and then else? anything book management. So if you need a Wikipedia page, yeah. if you need help with your book launch party, if you need help with, um, okay, do I need to do traditional versus um, self-publishing or what is... For me, the biggest thing and what's the saddest part is dystopia. Those writers, they get so sad when they submit it, their books to me. And I'm like, you know that dystopia is kind of phasing out right now and editors don't want to see it. We're, dystopia but, meaning like, they think yeah. everything more of their goes, work. Yeah, than... just everything. No, dystopia is when everything goes wrong. You know, like the apocalypse or Walking Dead and everything's uh, like going down oh. the drain. And there's I, this widespread yeah. like virus that's taking over everyone. Got They're it. more towards utopia now so like this perfect world yeah. where everything is great and everything is yeah that's what they're looking for right now for fiction for those I've types of stories. noticed that actually in commercials I challenge everyone to pay attention the commercials lately are uh, not about the product they're about making you feel good definitely Definitely. It, it, like you'll you'll have to wait until the end of a commercial to find out it's like, about okay, what Nissan was about? or Verizon or <laughs> right. yeah, because it's all about and gather your family together around the <laughs> table for that one last dinner and right. enjoy your Nissan. Or yeah, I, I think, mean, I think that people are they've had enough of the werewolves and the vampires and yeah. things like that. So I still enjoy those pieces, but I think that they're they're a little more selective with those pieces now. Yeah. Hmm. Well. There's two things I want to say about that. One, one, one is that um, I think that the marketing companies have us down to a science to where sure. they know exactly which buttons to push to oh. make us buy. And the one thing that they figured out about that is that buying anything is an emotional decision. So if they can get you into the right emotion, they can implant in your mind what it is they want you to buy. Definitely. Right? There's this book uh, that I read called The uh, 21 Immutable Laws of Marketing. And... In it, I think it's in this book, they talk about how Cinnabon makes you want to buy their cinnamon rolls, make it more likely that you will buy their cinnamon rolls by putting a kiosk at the beginning of the mall by the door oh. so that you just, but just for the purpose of having you smell it. So oh. that by the time you get to the main store at the end, it is a familiar smell. And now it smells like you know, familiarity and friendship and, you know, uh, an earlier good time that I think I had only a few minutes ago, but it's now not a new thing, right? I have to say, I don't think I've ever seen a Cinnabon in a mall. Really? Oh, really? Where would they be? Oh, I don't know. I, they yeah. just brought one back to Beachwood Mall. Okay. Yes, it was I'm gone usually for a while. sniffing the Auntie Anne's <laughs> pretzels yes. before oh, the Cinnabon. Spread. Yes, it's on the on the lower level yeah. now. The... But the second thing I was going to say is that I um, try really hard to be mindful of that kind of thing. And especially when it comes to TV, um, like I guard so much what hits my eyes now. Like, for example, The Walking Dead, Tiffany loves it. She watches it all the You are too? You're obsessed, obsessed by it? I can't understand people oh like you. Oh, it's just so there's, good. There's it's just so good. It's zombies killing each other and eating each other. No, that's not all. <laughs> that's a big part of it. Yes, I, know. I understand there's dueling factions that are fighting each other and there's politics involved and drama. But there's a lot of zombies eating people. I was actually a little grossed out by that first episode. I'm like, Man. what? I don't think I've seen Is any this? episodes of those. And then I got past you. that. And then I'm like, I really like these characters. Like, I'm love. I'm in love with the characters. When That's when what when says. two of the two or three of the most critical characters mm -hmm. passed away, I cried. Like I was sobbing and I was depressed for the rest of the day. I was like, oh my gosh, I can't. This. I'm not gonna say the names because I if someone is planning to get started after gotcha. listening to this, but I, I really I was I was in a sunken place. See, so you must be in a different um in a different mindset than me because I like guard my serenity so much <laughs> that like even a scary movie, <laughs> you know, I just I I like I like things that end happily. So you like you're a utopian. I'm mm -hmm. probably more utopian than dystopian. Well, don't okay. go see Life Itself. 
It's from the writers of This Is Us, speaking of. No, thank you. Oh, okay. um, and there was, it, we. I went on a Monday night and it was like, it was right after this podcast I went and it was three of us in the theater and it was like one of those things where like we all stood up at the end and we were just like, <laughs> like we oh, couldn't breathe and we're no. like, why do we do this to, to ourselves? But it was actually a very, very intriguing concept. What's it called? Uh, Life Itself. Hmm. It's just about how you are you you would like the concept it's, it's about how i am not only living molly gebler's life but i'm continuing the life of my mother and mm. my father and how it all kind of and and if i could just go a little further in in my life than the people that i'm living the life it was it was very interesting in the way it all kind of came together but it was very emotional at the end yeah. oh boy so, interesting yeah, yeah. um Anywho, what were we talking about? We were talking about um, what's in marketing. Yeah. We were talking about marketing mm -hmm. and advertising, which, by the way, I the other way I guard from advertising is I just I only stream things now instead of like watching them live. You know, it's only for me. It's all Internet streaming. Oh, you mean other than commercials on a TV? Yeah. Like I, I, I don't yeah. I can't remember the last time I saw a commercial because it was always Actually, I take that back. Mm -hmm. YouTube commercials that they force me to watch. Oh, goodness. Right, Those yeah. are the only commercials that I... I skip them when I can. Oh, no, yeah. Skip them. But I will say that um, Verizon is coming out with some really cool commercials that are tugging at the heartstrings. Hmm. Um, and then a, a car is also... I mean, they're just all tugging. They're all... Right. It it's has nothing much. to do it's with their product. Much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have to have a box of Kleenex just to watch <laughs> something uh, on YouTube. Well, I, but I imagine that's a big part of what you do, right? Oh, is, my gosh. Is, you, you don't. I, right. I have been writing a book and sobbing. Like, my husband walked past one time. I was I was in there. It was late. It was like 1 or 2 in the morning. I don't know why he came downstairs. He came downstairs for some reason. And he was walking past. And he was, I'm just like, oh, and I'm like <laughs> typing. And he's like, what are you doing in here? And I was writing a scene where someone had passed away. And I may, I was playing, um, I always cry when I hear um, peaceful piano music because they mm -hmm. play it at the end of sad movies. And so it always <laughs> makes me cry. So I was playing the peaceful piano mu music and I was writing the scene and I was just losing it. And so Gosh, I sent it over to the book. author. I sent it over to the author. And she's like, yes, you nailed it. And I'm like, she's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I cry. And I play <laughs> peaceful piano music because it's, you know, hmm. triggers that. So and if I'm writing an action scene, I'm I'm playing adventurous music. Like, that's just. Oh, huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I belong to a, um, a writer's group, and the leader of the writing, writer's group told us that tip. She's like, just play, like, adventurous music or sad music or whatever while you're writing. Huh. Do, you, uh, do you listen to Spotify? Oh, big time. That's okay. all I listen to. So We're on Spotify. We are on Spotify. Uh -huh, you are. <laughs> um, but I listen to a lot of movie soundtracks oh right yes. especially when i'm reading yes, you know because yes. you can't or working because you don't have you listen to the music while you're reading your book yeah because so here's the here's well here's the thing right um can't have words in it because that that's distracting but right. i can't i can't read in silence because then my mind starts talking to me and mm. that's distracting so there's got to be some kind of music for me to work and read the to same way. right how about i just leave the room and you two talk about books and i'll come you back when it's the lightning Aww, round. You, you stay. <laughs> i think we're getting ready for the lightning round actually Aww. um Wait, oh, I was gonna nothing ask. against books. I'm, I'm. You know, I'm writing. One. Do you, so you don't um, do the audio? Do you? Do audio I do books? do the audio. Okay, so I'm you're a reader. To slash Rob listener. Lowe's by autobiography, things I only tell my friends. It's actually very. Mm. He talks about being in moving to Malibu, and he he's I don't know, walking through I don't know somewhere, and he sees these two kids, and they're making these they have a video camera and they're making these little movies or whatever and so he asked if he could be in it and they say no and whatever and they he, I, he, he introduced himself i'm rob and he says yeah well i'm um i'm charlie and i'm emilio and it's Emilio sheen Estevez. and yeah. estevez and then later on oh no no it was it was chris i'm chris and this is my brother sean and it was the penn brothers mm. um but 
I don't know. Yeah, so I, I do let someone else read it, especially when it's in Rob Lowe's voice. Oh, boy. Even better. <laughs> <laughs> While she stares lovingly at the Rob Lowe poster on her ceiling. <laughs> no, I have. Um, no, my poster on my ceiling is, I don't really have one, but is, um, I always tell Dave Kevin. from... Um, from spasmatics oh. i always tell double d that because he gave me a a poster of when he was in zaza oh okay i thought you were He's saying the, kevin love they ever hear the spasmatics it's an 80s group they perform no. around everywhere and um he's the lead singer he used to be in a mm. band in the 80s called zaza with like long hair so i always tell him that that's that's hanging above my bed so <laughs> funny i digress well, this has been fascinating, Molly. Yeah. Um, mm. Are you ready for the lightning round? Sure. Ready? Let's do it. All right. Uh, Molly, would you like to ask your lightning round questions? Sure. Thank you, Alex. No, Molly, thank you. Um, Erica, <laughs> what are you binging? What am I binging? Mm-hmm. I'm binging I- Black Internet on Netflix. It is the most amazing show I've ever seen in my life. Black Internet. Black Internet. It is amazing. So and remember wh- when we were talking about um, Utopia? Mm-hmm. There's an episode on there where it's called San... Ooh, so it's some city in California. And it's about um, people that are... Uh, it's a, a lady that's quadriplegic. And there's a lady who's dying of cancer and they get to plug into this world and like their, their bodies are here, but their minds are going into this world and they're able to be healthy and young and free and live life. And hmm. are it was different episodes are different. They're like, not connected. So like you could the start black at, mirror or the black mirror. Oh, there we go. What oh is that what you're talking about? MG black mirror. Yes. Okay. Sorry about right. that. Okay. Black black we're with, yes. yeah. black you're, you've have you watched. guys seen black mirror? I I've seen black mirror. It's awesome. What did you guys think? I have not seen it. Have you seen I, all of them? No, I've, I've oh, watched. So you haven't seen the sand, whatever it was called. No. And the ones that I watched, I wasn't happy with because they were from the first season. And my cousin Rima said, you can't, can't watch that I've first. You got to watch it backwards. What? They, yeah, I've she's heard told that me, too. I'm watching it wrong. Are you? Are you in the first season? They did list it where season four was first. Yeah, but I started with because I've heard oh, that the no. season one is is gross. There's horrible. Oh, it's, it caught my attention the rather pig. quickly. The I pig, hear about the pig. The pig yeah. was the first episode I saw. So I watched it wrong. No, 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 no. 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 It's, it's, it's a matter of taste. Because some people can't get through oh, I got the through pig that. and then they don't watch well, anymore, I think is what. No, <laughs> I, no, I don't, I didn't mind the, the grossness. I thought it I just was, funny. it was, um, it was, I, th- I felt in that first season the ones that i saw that they spent 45 minutes on something that that could have been done in like 30 minutes right but but um my cousin rima said that as as you get farther in like a couple seasons in they get a lot tighter and they get yes you know more they do. on point they do but yeah. Yeah, the first one I saw was the pig one. And I'm like, my husband and I, we were in Vegas and we're in the hotel and we're just like, is this happening? Like, we were like, what is this? And can, I was can laughing. Can say, I don't know what, <laughs> what, what is. Black Mirror? What, no, what's about the pig? I don't even remember. So there is a, there, okay. Um, so the queen, the duchess's daughter uh, gets kidnapped and she's held for ransom. Um, and they, they release a, a video. And the prime minister has to have relations with the pig right. on live TV in order for them to release her unharmed. And he, you know, of course, refuses to do it. He's like, I'm not doing this. And um, Wait, don't spoil the ending. Yeah. Okay. You, you do. I think you do want to watch that one. That's uh, a great yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. crazy all right mm-hmm. well that was a really long lightning round question molly sorry that, no, that, was my, that was my fault no. I, I about black uh, internet it's versus all. black mirror <laughs> it's all. I, had, black <laughs> internet. I had a lot of follow-up questions there molly what, what's your next lightning oh round question oh my goodness okay uh what's on your mind right now mm-hmm. this very second mm-hmm. what the heck is that that's a beautiful picture and i don't know what it is oh, yeah. no. oh. it is the kumar the We'll take a picture of it Aegis so we can post gorgeous. it. The Aegis Kumar. 
Oh, beautiful. So that's this beautiful. This is the picture we're looking at, Nelly, so you can that post is it beautiful. too. Oh my gosh, I All love right, it. like that. All hmm. right, because now everyone's going to want to know. They're going to be like, what is she looking at? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's, it's. I mean, it says where it is down below yeah. there, but I'm going to have to say it's a little enhanced yeah, for as sure. far as the color yes. is concerned. All right. I mean, I'd look good if I was enhanced that much. That was a very, <laughs> that was a very. You cert- look good now, Molly. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Oh, look, there's a road up there. See, there's, there's like a cars road. There. There's and people there's looking at it. Yeah. Well, that was a very precise answer to Molly's yes, question. Yes, it was. Yes. Very literal. I would go swimming. <laughs> As we would park. expect from a writer, right? <laughs> uh, um, okay, so do you have your cell phone on you? I do. Pull it out. Oh, gosh. Do I have to go to the 16th picture? Oh, no. Oh, that, somebody, is, that is something Does somebody else did. do this? Oh, yeah. That's that's a big Facebook thing. Yes. Um, you need to read your last text message. Oh, boy. You don't need to say who it's from or for or anything like that. Just your last, last text message. No problem. Thanks for understanding. Okay. But the one before that was, I had a 1.30, a 3 p.m., and now I'm heading to Chagrin Falls for a podcast interview. If I can't get to your <laughs> to your blog till this evening, do you still want me to do it? I, and she said, no problem. <laughs> Always working this one. Did you leave out the part Always where you said, working. I'm going to Chagrin Falls to let these idiots uh, interview me for their podcast? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> she edited that part. She's an editor. <laughs> well done. Touche. Oh, uh, um, mine was, went to zoo today, got to get to civics. Um, speaking of civics, they closed for the season last night. That's our local ice cream store. And I missed it by about a half an hour. They literally sold out of ice cream. So I got to sit with Rick, who's also on our podcast, Rick Civic. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you take a look back, uh, you can listen to his episode. And, uh, we just kind of sat and talked about what he's going to do for the winter. So now you have to get it from the popcorn place, right? Yeah, which I do. I share my love between the two. Yeah. Um, but I can't get a hot fudge sundae at Aww. but maybe I can. You can trek out to Streetsboro and go to Strickland's. Have a good one? Strickland's. Strickland's. Okay. Is they open all year? No, they're See, closing the at problem. the end of October. Yeah. I know. Mitchell's maybe you friend. It's boring. It says, Hey dude, I'm getting pinched for time for a call. Might be a few minutes late. Apologies. Thank God it doesn't say I was pinching one off. <laughs> Molly, that t- you waited a whole Did hour, 15 edit? minutes. <laughs> no, no, that's got to stay in. Molly, you, that's a new record. You went an hour, 15 minutes be- without saying something inappropriate. Nice job. That's a new record. I will hey, say. Erica, you were here for this. This was huge. I do want to say that sure. on this episode... I would like to encourage everybody and Nellie, if you could, um, I'll, I will restart this, but here's a note for you. I'd like what I'm going to say next to go before the podcast begins. Um, I think we, I encourage everyone to play the drinking game. And when Alex says the word, um, dude, no, Tiffany. Tiffany. When Alex, you probably said Tiffany twenty times this episode. Just now. So I encu- no way. throughout the episode, listen, no ba- listen to it back. True. So I encourage everybody really? to grab it's only your three f- times. Grab your flow vodka, and anytime Alex says the word Tiffany, I didn't even notice. Oh um, my I want you to drink. I, I think oh, that you'll hilarious. be surprised to only have so. three drinks. I, it's probably a little, uh, a little. No, I should. Though. <laughs> let's, oh, let's, <laughs> a little pre banter. It was, it was during a, the pre banter oh, as got well. It. Got hey, let, it. Let's let's all guess how many times it was, and then um, okay, and then whoever is closest will get nothing. I would um, say uh, I'm going to go with nine. How many do you think? I wasn't here for the pre banter. But I would say, let's say eight, my favorite number. I'm going to say three. Okay. Oh, You're three. On. Wow, that's a big Free difference. banter included. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, uh, it's your turn. All right. Chief. Erica. Yes. You're on a desert island uh-huh. for at least three months. Could be the rest of your life. You don't know. You may bring with you any single author's entire bibliography. Which author do you bring? Goodness. Okay, I would bring 
I'm I'm a diehard Eric Jerome Dickey fan, like huge. What 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 book he is um, African American fiction, and he is like the most talented writer I know. Interesting. He um wow. he that I've met. Let's say I've had the pleasure of meeting. He um he also did a comic book series as well. Um, very talented, hmm. very talented. He does it full time. He lives in uh, California and just he's not married or anything. He just writes. Wow. He travels the world and meets his fans. And I met him like three times. And he's given me the best advice for writing a book. The best. What Would he like was... to be on our podcast yeah, remote? Our oh podcast. my gosh! Uh, Seek him out. What is uh what is a piece of advice that he gave you? He said, if you ever are writing your book and you get to the point where you're like, Okay, I think I'm done, he said, Give it to a friend, have them read it and say, What comes next? Ooh. And whatever they say, do the opposite. <gasps> mm. And I'm like That's uh That that's right deep. there. Yeah. Yeah. So ever since I'm like, Oh my gosh, I love this. So I do it and they they never say what I think they're gonna say. So I guess I'm doing a good job. I um, like the way that piece of advice took like two left turns. Oh my gosh, I didn't yeah. Expect right? it at all. I yeah, kind of nice like job, the Eric. black internet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Erica. That's, that should be the name of this episode, Black Internet. Black Internet? I'm cool with it. Works for me. Oh. Um, same desert island. Okay. Anywhere from three months to the rest of your life. Yes. You may bring with you any single musician's entire discography. John Legend. He's my Ooh. favorite. He helped my oh. husband propose to me. Oh. Stop it. Yes. Well, no, well, He's th- from Ohio. Like, what else can I say? In this real life, amazing. he did? Yes. So, first okay. of all, I was Tell. already a diehard. Like, from the moment I heard Used to Love You, I was a diehard fan, right? So, diehard. Then... So I'm obsessed with this guy and all, you know, my boyfriends at the time knew. And then I meet my my husband and he said, you know, John Legend's coming to town. Now, we had already we were already engaged to be married, but we got married twice. Right. So we got married in 2009 and 2010 on the same day. Why? Because we didn't have money for a wedding and we really wanted to get married. We didn't want to live together without being married. So we got in married sin. on a That's Friday. That's what Catholics say. Live, yes. You didn't want to live together we didn't in want to sin. Up. We didn't shack up <laughs> and be sinful. So um, we got married on a Friday on October 23rd and October 23rd, 2010. We had our wedding on our first, uh, first year anniversary. So anyway, I digress. Huh. Um, John Legend was coming here and he said... You want to go to the concert? I said, uh, yeah. So he was, uh, it was up to him. We knew we were going to get married, but it was up to him as to how he would propose to me officially. So we get to the concert and we're sitting behind these young ladies and they have these, these girls with them. And we're talking to them and they're like, we brought these girls because they're underprivileged and we want to, to bring them to the concert because they're big fans of John Legend. I'm like, oh, great. So, you know, my husband is continuing to talk, but then John Legend comes on. So I'm like, shut up. I'm not talking to them anymore. I'm on the show. So then he's talking and talking and talking. I'm like, what's going on? Well, it turns out he's talking to John Legend's mom. And he asked, what's your favorite song? I said, I love you, love. That's my favorite song by him. And he said he was asking the mom, was he going to perform it? And she said for like 30 seconds. And so it came on and he yanks me up and we go to the middle of the aisle. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, this is John Legend. What are you doing? (laughs) He gets on his knee and he proposes to me in front of the whole stadium. I was like, um, what was it? It was um, Scene Pavilion at the time. And so like all these people break out in applause and I'm looking like what? And they're all looking at us and I'm like, what is going? This is too much. So we ended up going backstage and we met him. And he's like, that's what, oh, you're stealing the shine from me? Like, that's what that applause was in the middle of the show? Like, I'm thinking that's I'm hitting awesome. it and you guys are getting engaged. Wait, <laughs> how did you get backstage? So they just... They found out, the mother went and talked okay. to John and said, hey, some people just got engaged at your at your show. You need to take and a picture with them. So we got a picture with them. How did your husband know? Would, will you share that picture with us? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'll text it to you guys. How did um, your... How did you know it was his mother or like how was that we connection? We were talking to the, the it was um, actually John Legend's aunt that we were speaking to. But then we had such good seats that the mother came and sat down and 
my I guess the aunt said this is his mom and then but by then John was on so I'm like not right. even paying attention and so my husband's like you're his mom oh I need to ask you something because I know you're at every show he's like is he gonna do I love you love and then she's like we're like 30 seconds and so oh that's my how gosh. I've been. I'm like oh that's... my gosh you are so sneaky that's, that's outstanding. crazy. That's a great story. That's Thank crazy. you. Um, yeah. yeah. I like John Legend too. He's yeah, a good he's guy. A, yeah. He's a yeah. really yeah. good guy. What do you think about the wife? Christy? She's, yeah. she's she seems to be a pistol, first of all. She's I a like pistol. her. I think she would be a friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's just very I outspoken. love her McDonald's commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that yes. that's uh you can send that picture. Absolutely. That'd be great. Yes. Uh, oh, hi, Alex, are you ready for the last question? Yes, I am. Uh, oh, no. Um, I have two more questions. Erica, what is a routine or habit that you have that you've gotten the most mileage from? So the most mileage, I wrote my book in 25 days. My last book it only took me 25 days to write. Um, and it was over 100 pages, too. And what I did was I got up every day at 530. That's the it. End. Waking up at 530 <laughs> I got, in the morning. No, there's no. I, I struggle to get out the bed at seven. Yeah. Okay. So I got up every day an hour and a half earlier. And I just wrote. And I, I didn't brush my teeth or anything. I just got downstairs, got a cup of coffee. <laughs> I was like, okay, because my daughter, she's an early riser. I'm like, I got to get at least an hour before she gets up. And from 530 to 630, I would write. And I just, hmm. I knew what I was going to, you know, write about. I would, you know, write an outline or put something together. But I got up and every day for an hour, my husband gets up at like five. So he's a total overachiever. So he'd be there with me. He'd be on his iPad and I'd be just typing. And, and do you have to go to five days? Did you have to go to bed earlier? Unfortunately, um, I could not. I can't. Yeah. I can't go to bed early. <sighs> so I was just struggling during the day for the for that month. But, and then yeah. I ended up getting sick and everything, too, because oh. I wasn't getting enough sleep. But oh, wait. So after you finished that book, did your body continue to wake up? Heck no, man. You went right back I was to the back, no. schedule. It's like elastic. I am not an early no. riser at <laughs> right. all. No. Um, Agreed. <laughs> and then um, we've added a lightning round question as of the last episode. Ooh, it's called nice. the it's called the Christie, if you remember yes. correctly. So uh, we had a, a guest on Christy George who um, writes a magazine called Neighbors, publishes it, and her we 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 liked her question so much that we decided to make it part of our lightning round. The question is, if you could interview any person from history, living or dead, who would it be? Rosa Parks. Ooh, good one. Very brave. I always love bravery in women, and women, they say that, you know, um, well-behaved women don't make history, mm -hmm. and I agree. I'm not well-behaved. I, you know, I, I definitely don't go by the status quo. I, I like to shake things up. Okay, the last and final, finally, lightning round question. We, yes. we were just getting told that our lightning round is taking too long, but I don't care. It's going to take as long as it the takes. The funny thing that we were told <laughs> is that the average listening time is 22 minutes. Mm. Asking people to listen to 1.5 hours is not realistic. <laughs> Uh, I don't care about that statistic. We're, this is well, going to take. A... You have one lister for an hour and a half, and that's right. Gail Ellington. My mother will listen oh, to hello, every Gail. word of this. Hello, Gail. <laughs> we said a long time ago, if the only people who listen to this are our guest and Absolutely. their mom, then, then it will. Then, then this is a good that. podcast. <laughs> that's right. We're fine. Um, oh, Gail will know the answer to this, um, or maybe not. Erica, what is an embarrassing thing about yourself that no one, including your mom, knows? Okay, so I can't do... I was going to go with something, but everybody knows this. And that the one I was going to go with is I cry like, oh my gosh, if Molly was to start crying right now, we would be crying together. Yes, I I'm the same cannot. way. I'm I the can't same way. Um, the most embarrassing thing I will probably have to say that I said to myself is I know um, all of Criss Cross's first album by heart, and I still sing it, it with my kids to this day. Okay, who's Criss Cross? Jump, jump, the you? Mac Dad will make it. Jump, jump, Daddy Mac will make you. You don't Chris remember Cross Daddy Mac and Mac Daddy? Oh you know how I'm not, I'm not a rap backwards. person. No, no, no. <laughs> they were kids. They were they were oh. like right. nine when but, they came oh out, gosh. and this was like in yeah. 1990. But before Criss Cross, did you listen, used to listen to ABC and Other Bad Creation? No, oh. that was their rival. I hated ABC. What? Get out. You didn't listen to Coolin' at the Playground? 
No. Oh, man. That, that was, was Chris Cross's awesome. rival. I know. There was no ABC <laughs> played in my house. I really, I really used to I get... I was a diehard Chris Cross fan. Yeah, but I used to, like, didn't you used to like the rivalry? <laughs> no. It, you know, like the... Did you listen? Did you used to listen to the uh, to the East Coast West Coast rivalry, yes, like I NWA did. and Ice Cube rivalry? Yes, did you listen did. to that? Yes, I did. See, I I really fed off of all that. Oh yeah, hatred and animosity. Right. I know, right? I know that's terrible, right? But it was it was it was exciting because I thought it was fake, but then it turned out it wasn't. Oops. But yeah, I thought um, it was fake. I thought hysterical. it was staged. The uh, uh, the 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 grown up rivalries or the kids rivalries. The I thought that the, the whole Tupac and Biggie thing was like I thought they were just trying to Publicity. sell records until yeah, no, someone died. Killed, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> That'll do it. Right. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this was real. So um, But the kids, no, I didn't know if that I thought I I was ten. I'm like, oh, we hate ABC. Really? Oh man, I really <laughs> I, I, I liked them both. I liked um, New Kids on a Block, too. That's embarrassing to admit, but I did like them. You're, there's a couple other people. I don't know too much about them. I think Rob <laughs> Sapp, that was his... Yeah. Color me bad. Yeah. I know no. this girl right now. She's in her mid-30s. And... Is it Tiffany? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Drink up. <laughs> it is... <laughs> No, um, it's uh, it's a friend of mine uh, who is a dentist, and to this day, when In Sync gets back together for their tours, oh, she still goes, and she knows all five members, and they know her, oh. and she is like a grown up groupie oh, that is of In Sync so to this day. Speaking of which, Justin Timberlake's coming back. I'm super pumped about. He's gonna that. be here tomorrow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like that dude. I kind of got a, a, a non gay bromance crush on him. I love yeah. Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Love him. Yeah, um, did you wait? Can we get back to the to the um, to the uh, gangster rap beef? Yes. So uh, <laughs> there is a really. Did you ever watch any of the um, the the documentary series called Beef? My husband has watched every single. Yeah. it's rap crazy. Documentary. Yeah. So I didn't watch that one, but he did. He was trying to get me to watch it. I'm like, that I one's crazy. Watch this. Uh, I, so I grew up listening to gangster rap. Okay. Right. All that's all I listened to. Color from, me shocked right now. From like <laughs> age eight until well into college, right? Oh, you sound like my husband. <laughs> I was that I was that white kid who like with the windows rolled all the way down, <laughs> had these giant like woofers in the trunk. Oh my you know? gosh. And I would like I would like have this gangster lean while I was driving <laughs> and I'd like look at people menacingly, you know. I can't. Yeah. I was totally that was totally me. And I knew every lyric to every Who was your favorite? NWA by far. Oh wow. But I went So you through, watched the movie. Did you watch oh, Straight sure. Out of Oh, okay. Yeah. But there was a there was a before that I was really into uh Boogie Down Productions and KRS One. Oh, you taking it cheese. Way taking back. It. You were just a you were a baby. Oh, when I was I listening was. to uh yeah. I can't um, listen to anything pre Jay Z. Like yeah, I, I and, wasn't into rap until Jay Z. See, and I can't listen to anything after Jay Z. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. And when I listen to like, or I can't listen to any of it. So. <laughs> I didn't even go see Hamilton because of it. So. Oh, but you know what? So much of it now is like singing. That is like right. barely any rap now. It's yeah. like all singing now. Yeah, I don't know. I whenever I hear any of it now, I just don't understand it. It's I, I'm not I on that like wavelength beats. anymore. I just want the instrumentals. Yeah. I was like, I'm telling my age because I don't even want to listen. I'm like, who is this? What's his name? Little something. Like, I can't. Well, I'm listening to a lot of DJs now because I oh, like those yeah. beats too. Oh, my goodness. I could do without Who's the lyrics. Who's your favorite DJ? So I'm a fan of... Um, uh, I like Marshmallow. Do you I like Marshmallow? One. I, li I like him. Do you listen to Nightmares on Wax? No. That one's a, that's a really good one. And then there's, um, there's one called uh, Bonobo. Have you ever heard of Bonobo? No, I haven't. Uh... That one's huge. Um, they sell out like giant stadiums, and th I think they're. Do European. you like Mick Boogie from Cle? He's from Cleveland, but he moved to New Boogie. York. Mick Boogie, he started. He got his grassroots here in Cleveland, and now he's blown up. He's in really? New York. He's huge. I'm about to check that out. The you know, J. somebody J. was. Hold on, before we get on. Did you know that um, yesterday they uh, this rapper named um, Eric Wright was filming a video here. Eric Wright I think that was his name Eric like Wright. Easy E Eric that, that's what I thought it was but it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't do easy. you know that was my nickname like everyone called Easy-E e. <laughs> why Erica I don't know 
why? Uh, no. Was it the boys calling it? No, you? it was not. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I was pretty sheltered up, okay. until, up until a certain Where'd age. Where'd you but, grow up? Um, I, sh- I grew up in Warrensville, but I went to private school. Okay. For a long time. I went to St. Pius okay. and then I went to Regina and then my fresh or sophomore year I came to Solon okay. High School and then yeah, but I was or like Solon or something. Solon, yes. Solon. Yes. Man. So uh, I was I was a little sheltered for a little while. <laughs> I don't know who the, it wasn't Eric so Wright. So Eric though, Wright. Huh? No, it wasn't Eric Wright. It uh, was here in Chagrin or here in Cleveland. In Cleveland. And uh uh my friend T <laughs> and I <laughs> T. Oh boy, we're using. I didn't want to say because I don't yeah. want. We're using make, initials. Oh my gosh, just say it. I don't want to make people drink right now. Uh, <laughs> who, who, who's T? It doesn't matter. T and company. That's, and still, that still counts. Everybody, and I were take a go, sip. Sip we, your flow vodka. We were gonna go and be in the video. They filmed it yesterday at the aquarium. Oh my Ooh. God. Yeah, and we were going to be in it, but we decided that we were too old, <laughs> and that like it was probably just going to be a bunch they of college may, kids. They may have decided yeah. that for you. Well, this has been a great episode. It girls. has been. We I've hope that you've it. enjoyed the show. Yes. Now go to the best podcast ever dot com and subscribe so you get an email every time a new episode drops. You can also subscribe. And listen to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or YouTube. Wherever you listen, please rate the show so other people can find us. Links for each player are on our website, thebestpodcastever.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter (laughs) at PB, no, (laughs) BPE underscore podcast. Uh, Email us your thoughts at best podcast ever one at gmail.com i don't you gotta say it with feeling molly <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget to watch the black internet black on internet Netflix. <laughs> Look it and up. where can we find you <laughs> where can people find you on instagram i'm lyrical innovations llc as well as on facebook and then the website is lyrical innovations llc.com excellent lovely what else anything else we've got um the film festival, but that will be over mm-hmm. by the time are you this doing is any, recording. Are you doing a bunch for it? Uh, I'm doing the red carpet. I'll be the host for the red carpet. Um, then choose tomorrow night is the big event in the park where we um, show films and light the falls. Um, so I'll be hosting that. Um, is it going to be uh, bittersweet for you because your documentary is not going to be part of it? No, no. Actually, we're showing uh, the Pumpkin Roll October 20th. Ooh. Uh, it's a free event um, at the Township Hall, um, and it'll be at uh, 2 o'clock. Look for more information coming soon. Um and then the uh, hardware store has their scary room open. If you haven't been there, you got to oh, head to the hardware store in the yeah. back. So I um, was live on Facebook for that today. Interesting. Um, yeah. A, a couple hours ago, we had 1.4 thousand <laughs> or uh, a thousand views already and like 25 shares. And wow. People love the hardware store. Really? As they should. But they should. Yeah. 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 Um, I- yeah. Um, thanks, folks. This has thanks. been a, a oh. wonderful episode. Thank you, Erica Parker. Yes. Thank you. Thank Easy. you for Much. joining us. And I'm not a ghost. No, no, she's not, but a good writer. <laughs> right. Thanks, Thank Molly Gebler. Thanks, Alice Gertzberg. Thanks, folks. See ya.